ikke den del, den er sånn del som skal handle om muligheter og utfordringer ved teknologi og digitalisering i reiselivet. Nå trenger jeg at alle setter seg langt fra personen og trekker den inn til digitale bordet. Gjør klar for å skru opp for innovasjon. Vi er jo her, Connecting Bold Leaders with Brave Ideas. Den neste som kommer på scenen nå har altså 25 års erfaring i riksdekken. Han skulle ut vært å lytte til hvis det skal bli spredt på temaet teknologi og reisen. Forfatter, forholdsholder og foreleser. Han er hittil den eneste, selvfølgelig den første, som har arrangert reisevidskonferanser i metaverset. Holy bias. Han er også grunnleggeren av Travel Singularity. Han foretrekker selv titel Internet Troll. Vi hører hva han har å si. Ta vel imot, Simon Fato. Hello, everybody. So, first of all, I'm very sorry about what you do this English. So, it's not that I can try. So I bought this little book, and it says it's guaranteed to get you talking. Then I came across this word, <laughs> uh, but I did learn one word, and that is, I think, all I need for my remaining three days in order. Okay? So let's talk a little about Web3. Okay? Um, first of all, when we talk about Web3, it's all about decentralization. But decentralization is becoming such a buzzword now, just like AI, right? Uh, what we mean with decentralization is basically taking control from a single place to several smaller places. And if you think about it, the travel use is extremely centrified. We can also say that it's over-centralized in a way, right? And this is because most companies working in the travel space play the centralized and impera game for years. Now let's take a look at a few numbers here. So this is coming from a study published by The Edge. 67% of the distribution of books is in the hands of the three players. 81% of reviews are in the hands of three players. This is coming from the And to a certain extent, even more alarmingly, 99% of meta search is three players. So we can say that this is a pretty centralized use, right? Now, I want to do a text explaining because I really don't like it, uh, but uh, probably we need to understand a little better what we mean when we talk about Web 1, Web 2, and Web 3, right? So, especially in our business, when we talk about Web 1, it's pretty much this. This is the website of the whole that we're seeing now, just a few years ago, okay? Remember, Rafa was more like the bizarre version of Flesh Anyway. Um, Web 1, static website. Pretty much no booking capabilities. If you want to book a hotel, you had to call them or send an email or fill a form. That is exactly what we do not want, as Sam was saying before, right? Uh, the content was mainly generated by hotels, and there was a lack of personalization and a very low level of price. And then we moved to Web 2.0 with the comment website, apps, user generated content, a higher level of personalization, but this is where things started to become super centralized. And now we're moving to Web3, and this is more about asset tokenization, interoperability, and so forth. Now, what you need to understand is technology never happens linearly. It happens exponentially. And I really like this quote by Kurtzberg that says, if I take 30 steps on a line linearly, I just get 30 steps. But if I take 30 steps exponentially, I get to a billion. And that is exactly what is happening with technology today. Again, this is just something that I, that I did yesterday, but take a look at that. First time in the moon, 
1969, four kilobyte run. And then we moved to 1981, the first uh, IBM, and this was time four deaths. We moved to the PlayStation 1, that was time 125 the IBM. And we go to uh, the, the spatial computing now, and we got 1,025 times more ground power than position one. So you see this is not a lie, this is exponential. And this is what I call the Pasquale paradox. Now you probably are thinking, who's Pasquale? Probably is a philosopher, like a tech guru, I don't know. Well, to understand who is Pasquale, we need to go back to 1985. And this is me in 1985. And I only had two cares in the world. He met in the Masters of the Universe and Commodore 64. So, and I remember I was six and I went to my father, Pasquale, and said, look, I want to learn basic, so I want to, you know, create my own games. And he said, why don't you go playing outside, you know? Why all these computers? And then he said something that resonated with me forever. Something super boring that, you know, it's like, if you know my father, it's impossible. Like, a super aggressive guy. Anyway, he said, this is very, this is actually very good. It's, it's great on t-shirt. We are the last generation with great means. And what he meant by that was, look, we were the generation playing with the dust, going outside, and you are with computers all day, you're probably becoming blind, you know, and this is the work of the devil and whatever. So the day before leaving for Norway, I took my father's mobile phone and I checked how much time he was spending on the internet. And it was four hours a day. This is my father, by the way. Okay? So that's the Pasquale Paradox. From now on, whenever you think about technology, never linear, it's exponential, but it happens and we don't even realize because that's the same guy that in 1985 was saying, go outside and play. Okay? That's why I don't like to talk about web 1, 2, and 3. And we can say that maybe now we are in web 2.5, maybe web 2.4. It's not exactly web. Right. Now, in Charlotte, we had so many new opportunities. So the first one was, of course, the e commerce in the 90s. And then social media in the 2000, up until the big distribution centralization that happened in 2010, right? Now, we don't want to miss another opportunity, but we're about to miss another opportunity, right? So let's try to understand a little better all the different nuances of what Web3 could mean in Charlotte. So first of all, of course, is DeFi. So, by doing something as simple as accepting crypto payments in your property, you can have way more revenue. Um, this is a study made by the little and said that 92% of businesses accepting crypto are reporting increased revenue, increased uh, base growth, and brand crash. And uh, the value of all these people is pretty good, even though it's in a way I'm pretty much a crypto winner now, but this is 320 billion. Even if you only accept Bitcoin, that is 800 B. And of course, there are so many different uh, nuances to that. You know, the transactions are more secure, the fees are pretty much minimal, and so forth. And there are already several companies doing that. Travel is one, Concierge IO is one, and OTAs that are not suited are already doing this. These are just a few of the OTAs that are accepting free payment, basically via third parties. So you get Expedia, you get Booking, you get Google, and so forth. And this is where I really like, because you know, DeFi is pretty much straightforward, but secondary marketplaces, uh, or the centralized marketplaces, this is where things become pretty interesting. Now, I'm pretty sure uh, this happened to you. You want to go to a concert, uh, you go to the website, and the tickets are gone, right? That happened to me with the fashion mode just a couple of months ago. I wanted to see the fashion mode, tickets gone, like in 10 minutes. So now I had to go on a secondary market. The same ticket was maybe twice the price, a three times the price, right? And the global secondary market, this is what we mean, secondary market for tickets, is 2.6 billion. Now we don't have this in boots, 
but you could. So let's say you book a room, you cannot go, you can resell that room. Or you can actually buy a room and resell that room for profit. What you can do with that is first of all you add this fun and excitement or gamification level to it. On top of that, we could put a little room in the smart contract by saying that every time the room is resold, the hotel will still make some money out of it. So it's basically creating so many different revenue sources. And again, there are many companies that are doing this. You know, we talked a little about big data before we have uh, it, but uh, this is just a, a bunch of companies that are working on it. And uh, I also uh, published an article a few weeks ago saying at some point we could have guests becoming revenue managers because what they could do is buy rooms to sell them at a higher rate to make a profit out of them. And that's great because again, the hotel wouldn't make a profit out of them. So right now, the only thing we can do with rooms is we can sell them, we can buy them, but with the centralized marketplaces, we can trade them exactly how we do with tickets. So something else, I'm pretty sure this happened to you. You want to book a hotel, you go on a search and you see this. Same room, same property, same rates, but the price is completely different. Now, this is not a hotel coming up with a very smart distribution strategy. This is usually because of commission undercuts, meaning an OTA cutting a piece of the commission to be more attractive with lower rates. And uh, this is coming from treaties. They say that this is costing hotels one billion every year in lost direct revenue. Now with blockchain, because it's immutable, what we could do is we could fix this problem that we're trying to fix through regulation for years now. So basically every time we give a rate to somebody, that rate cannot be modified. Uh, the bad news is that MetaSearch will go out of business because there will be no need for MetaSearch if we have like permanent but, but still, we can control what happens to our rates. We can control what happens to our distribution systems. Because right now, the only thing we could do is we can monitor the rate family and the inventory. With Web3, we can control it. And control is the word that comes more often when we talk about web three. I'm actually right now hosting a series of podcasts on the topic because it's the next, and we decided to call it control. And I'll talk about that on a big joint edition fans so that's kind of else. Um, but if you control your price and your inventory, you basically control the type of guest that comes at your door. Because now if you are telling you know that at some point you find yourself in an OTA or a tourist center, you didn't know anything about it. You don't have a contract with them. You have no idea why they had photos taken from that photo shoot that you did in the 70s. There's something you can do. With blockchain, you can actually take that control. And this is why this is very interesting to me as well. Reviews. Uh, we were having a discussion yesterday about it, but you know, depending on the statistics you look at, reviews are generally fake. You know, this is probably the, the best case scenario that I found. Uh, and it says that between 30 and 40% of reviews online are fake. I like this one. Uh, so, <laughs> if you read this review, everything was great, except they saw a ghost. So, I spent the first 10 years of my career working in hotels, so I do have a lot of these horror stories. But I really like this one, okay? Now, with blockchain, we can actually fix the problem of fake reviews. Because let's say you sleep at a hotel and you will receive an NFT proving that you slept in the property. Only with that NFT, you can leave a review. So you cannot leave a review for a place that you've never been to. Uh, so a client of mine, uh, this was a couple of months before the opening, received a bad review. And he said, the, the, the state was great, but the pillow for so and so. But I thought it didn't open yet. So I called them and I said, look, can we remove this review? And they said, no, we don't care about the release of, of reviews, you know. Um, unless they're not saying anything offensive, that's fine. I said, look, it's not going to open. Yeah, we don't care. Okay? That's it. We can solve that with 
a proof of attendance, a proof of stay in the firm in the form of an NFT, right? And think about travel influence. Now, I'm pretty sure you see stuff like that from time to time. I work with them, so I see it all the time. Like, you got this big influence. So look at my computer that you give me 25 night for free, uh, uh, full, uh, food, I want a lunch and dinner and, you know, a welcome drink and a mini bar and my family is going to, my father and my cousin, okay? And I will give you like three posts. Now, the thing is that for a lot of these influencers, this is pretty much all fake. Where NFT proving that you're actually slept in the property or a destination will solve that problem at the very beginning. Again, what else can we fix with Web3? The um, yeah, accounts. So I'm pretty sure you have that. And that's not only a problem we do have in Toronto. Um, on average, we have around 90 to 120 different accounts that we should manage. Okay? Just think of passwords. Bang, yes, you know, just you forget them, you don't know where they are. So forth. And I always say we could fix that with a wallet. So one ring slash wallet to rule them all. This is what we call the centralized identity management. And again, this is happening. It's not that it's not happening. There are companies doing this. You know, it's Passable, for example, they're doing an amazing job. In the future, we could have wallets that are the single point of truth of all our information. And it can have everything from our passports, checking, checkout information, and so forth. Loyalty problems. Uh, on average, this is McKinsey, the American consumer belongs to 16.7 customer loyalty problems. That's another painful thing. You know, companies get bankrupted and uh, you lose the points or the points expire. There's nothing you can do, right? Now, what we can do is we can decentralize that, meaning that all the points that we gain are in our wallets, and we can use these points in a more agnostic way. So let's say I sleep on the Ryzen, but I want to buy something on Amazon, I can do it because it's on my wallet. And if Ryzen or Amazon go out of business, eh, you know, it can happen. There's no problem, it's on my wallet. So what should we talk about since the transition taking back control? This is a great example. Friends of mine, the Bristol Paris, amazing property. If you, if you are in Paris, go there. They got an amazing. What they did was, let's try this is very French. And I can say that because I lived 10 years in Paris. My, my kid is French, so I have a few French people, right? So basically, they wanted to be super exclusive. What they did was they launched a VIP crypto plan uh, that you can join by buying these NFT, eight Ethereum, if you not. And you have all of that. Again, it's a great way, especially for luxury, to create a rewarding experience. And this is even scarier. Do you remember my space? You do remember my space. Thanks. So, did you know that the first 12 years of my space data were lost because of a server migration? If you think about it, that's a scary thing. And this is because nothing will stay on the web to forever. And another pretty interesting example. This girl here, okay? Um, Australian artist. Around uh, 10 years ago, she decided to open an Instagram account. And the Instagram account name was Metaverse. At Metaverse. And, uh, you know, she was doing okay -ish, like, a few hundred followers, nothing. But then, Facebook rebranded it. So, Facebook changed the name to Meta, and the day after, they closed her account by saying, you're impersonating a company. She had that account since 12, uh, I think, 2012 or 20, 2013, right? And they can do it for you, you know? You have something and it's taken away from you. And either it is because you know you're uh, saying something that is not really aligned with, uh, with the culture, or it can also be that you're creating content for a platform that is losing its charm. I have an example for that. This is a this is a, this should be a client of mine. Uh, I followed them for quite a long time. Library of Collection New York. Amazing problems. At some point, 
number one, two, three, and four hotel in TripAdvisor were library hotels. And then, you know, the time was the VIP marketing, uh, I was told, look, we don't spend anything on marketing. The, the only marketing we need is the fact that we are number one, two, three, and four on TripAdvisor, right? Now, imagine if TripAdvisor kicked their house. All the reviews, all the reputation cannot be taken from TripAdvisor and moved to something else. And this is why we start talking about decentralized social media. Minds is a perfect example. Threads, to a certain extent. Master, meaning that if I publish something on a social network and then I want to move to another social network, I bring all of my posts with me, all of my photos with me. The data and everything that I've done are on my wallet. And that's a funny thing because this is a great quote from Mark Twain that says, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. And if we look back, when we talk about Web3 and we see all these people you know, talking about Web3 in a way that is, yeah, this is just a video game or whatever, this is pretty much the same thing we used to do in the 90s with the web. So I published an article a couple of months ago, and it was about merits. Uh, but I said, the metaverse is gone, and it's really it. And uh, it's like a four-page article about why the metaverse sucks. Published on LinkedIn, everybody was correct. Yeah, the metaverse is crap, you know, it's just video games. I said, you know what, and it can't be for me. And I said, you know what, the only thing I did was I took 20 articles from the 90s and I changed the word internet with metaverse. So we need to be careful when we talk about technologies, because maybe we cannot even see the possible implications of that. But in travel there are so many. Room mapping. If you work in a hotel, you know how painful this is. You need to connect your rooms to all different distribution channels. And each distribution channel will have a slightly different approach. So you've got channel managers that needs to map all the rooms. It's very complicated. This is something you can fix by having a mutable system where all your rooms are. Or API integration. This is a little more technical, but I'm pretty sure you know that. If you want to integrate a system, the first thing you need is access to the API. Now, this is a painful experience sometimes, especially if you've got a legacy system or if you've got something that was built in the 80s or the 90s. Um, this can actually solve that problem at a more technological level. Or this is another one that we like, you know, creating a DAO for managing destinations. Uh, we were having a discussion yesterday. It would be great, for example, to have uh, like an NFT for anybody that comes to know, visit me. And that NFT can kind of give me uh, some possibility to unlock the destination. So maybe I can go to the museum and I can just have a discount because I have that. Or I can talk about knowledge because maybe I've been here like 10 times and this is on my NFT, right? And, uh, and I can even at some point have some stain in the way we manage knowledge. So this NFT will give me some kind of voting rights about discussion. Should we do something for Norway? Should we uh, maybe focus more on this niche of tourists? And tourists can have a say on that, right? Or attributes by selling. We've been talking about it for years, you know? Not only selling the rules, but selling the attributes of the rules. With NFT, you can do that. You break one room in different NFTs. That's Wi-Fi, that's the view, that's it. You just build the room from the ground up. Or when you marketing, again, uh, right now, especially in Europe, we got a big problem with GDPR. That's, to be honest, uh, is there anybody, any of you is involved in GDPR? Like edition, edition, you? So just don't tell me this is This is possibly the worst uh, regulation ever created, right? Um, and it, so uh, to the point, uh, I don't want to say, I would say, I would tell you this way. Um, well, you can fix that by using Web3 Marketing. Because with Web3 Marketing, the only thing you need to know about your customers is their public key of the wallet, right? And so basically, you can stay in touch with whoever, you can even predict what users want. Still, you don't have to know one single thing about this people. And I always say, you know, I'm a music freak. Uh, yeah, it's pretty obvious by now. 
I always say that Web3 is to Web2 what punk rock is to disco music. So, you know, I always finish this um, presentation by saying, do we want to be the Bee Gees or do we want to be the Sex Pistols? Now, for Norway, I slightly change that. So, Web3 is to Web2 what black metal is to disco music. So, the question is, do we want to be the Bee Gees or do we want to be Mayan? We probably want to be Mayan, right? Yeah, my own. <laughs> that was Satan, right? That's Satan. Uh, I got a little gift for you, okay? So you were super kind, and again, after this, I'm going to also let my dogs work in an amazing company. First time I come, so thank you so much. You're really very kind. I want to take you back. And uh, I have a few um, presents for you. The first one is this book that we published with Hospital uh, Internet, uh, the biggest travel and hospitality blog in the world. It's a philosophy, 200 words to understand what you should. It's not only me, it's me, uh, it's Henry from Hospital Internet. We have a lot of strange people in Katsota, this one, as a transhumanist party in the US. So you have a lot of crazy people on this. Um, I tried to put as many as I could on my luggage, so my clothing options are pretty limited, but I have probably 50 books here, so you can come and pick one, okay? But every single one of you will receive an NFT in the book. So if you do have a wallet, or if you want to create a wallet, you can create a wallet and I can send you the NFT. On top of that, I will send you a certificate of uh, attendance um, of this event that we did today, so this is the NFT I did, and I did like a very limited series with a black metal. Okay, so if you receive that one, it's cool. Um, so that's it. As you can see, there are so many different nuances when it comes to web street. So many different things that we can do. And a lot of these things we don't even know. But we need to move. Because again, as I explained before, the number of small paradox, that's the same guy. That's the same guy that said, we are the last generation with great means. Now, you're spending four hours a day on the internet. You can in your lifetime. And a great science fiction writer once said something that really resonated with me. That was out. No, you should hear guys, regardless. And he says, I came up with my own theory when it comes to technology. Everything that is created since the day we were born, up until we are teenagers, is pretty much normal. It's for you. Everything that is created between the age of maybe 16 and 30 is exciting. We can make a career out of that. But everything that is created after the age of 40 is against the nature of things. Now, this is the approach that a lot of us have when it comes to technology. But we don't have to keep this approach. If you want to get in touch with me, these are my contacts. You will find them on the book. You will find them around. I get a pretty uh, you know, pretty uh, strange name, Simone Uoto, not Puerto, even though that's not the difference. Um, and I talk mainly about that. Web3, AI, decentralization, in the travel and hospitality space. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. And, um, I'll work on that. I'll work on that. I promise. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we go here. We want Allah for a talk.